It was 1924, the year Norman McCall was born, and the dawn of a new age in America. Young doughboys returning from the war to end all wars found jobs plentiful and wages high. From the White House, President Calvin Coolidge gave the first ever radio address to the nation. Bathtub gin was in, flappers were the rage, and a first-class postage stamp cost two cents. In southwest Louisiana, life was simple. Young Norman McCall played with a few homemade toys and made mischief with the help of his younger brother, Pete. He learned to fish the Mermental River that flowed in front of his house, and he hunted ducks and geese in the marshes of Grand Chenier, where old wagon trails served as roads and boats were essential. Grand Chenier was a very remote community, about 30 miles east of the county seat of Carmen, Louisiana. Uh, actually, when I was born, there were no ways of getting to Grand Chenier except by boat. As my father uh, uh, owned a small freight vessel, freight boat. In those days, it was 65 foot. It was a huge vessel in those days. Mm -hmm. And once a week, he traveled to Lake Arthur, Louisiana to pick up supplies for the local community and to bring anything that the local community had to sell. But on the edges of this pastoral existence, world tensions were brewing. Although the new League of Nations held the promise of world peace, Adolf Hitler is sentenced to five years in jail for his participation in the Beer Hall Putsch. He will serve only nine months. The world economy, booming during the Roaring Twenties, is on a course to implode, and in just a few short years, the world would plunge into depression and war. In Grand Chenier, Norman McCall finishes high school with the largest ever graduating class, 21 students strong. He spends one semester at Louisiana Tech, and then, determined and patriotic, he joins the war effort. Though far from the Mermental River and bayous of his youth, McCall chooses to remain close to the water. He volunteers for submarine duty and is sent halfway around the globe aboard the USS Jack. He is 18 years old. Well, all of it was spent on submarines in the South Pacific, East China Sea, Sea of Japan, Celebes Sea, Indian Ocean, and the Pacific Ocean. The submarine I was on got credit for sinking 30 Japanese ships over that period of time. At the end of his tour of duty, three years and 28 days later, Norman returns to Grand Chenier, a changed man in a changed world. Life was tough. There weren't very many job opportunities in my part of the country in southwest Louisiana. Um, the one thing that was developing was the offshore industry. Uh, Several of the oil companies were beginning to do seismic work in the Gulf. In 1947, Norman went to work for one of those companies, Pure Oil, as a captain aboard a converted wooden minesweeper. Other Navy boats and even shrimp boats and oyster luggers were pressed into service. There was no air conditioning and quarters were usually cramped. In this fledgling industry, the work was demanding, time-consuming, and labor-intensive. And in those days, things were a whole lot different to uh, all the material that went offshore. The boat crews had to load on the boats. You did have occasionally some roustabout help, but all the, for example, all the gels, the muds, all of that material was in 100-pound sacks. So you manhandled all that stuff onto the boat and off the boat. When Pure Oil was sold and its Marine Division eliminated, Norman found himself out of a job. But by then, he had already purchased his first crew boat and a utility boat, and both went to work for a day rate of $150. In 1969, Norman built his first boat, the Phyllis McCall, for $98,000. 
Today, the boat is still working in New York Harbor. Well, I know Dad worked a lot, a lot of long hours, because uh, when he was first starting out, uh, you know, it was a very small company, and he oversaw or did a lot of the repairs and himself. Uh, and I tried to go with him whenever he would let me. With a focus that can only be described as intense, Norman began to push the boundaries of vessel size, adding multiple engines and increasingly complex equipment. The industry took notice. He had, uh, you know, groundbreaking ideas, new ideas, always wanted to go after something new, uh, innovative. I mean, he wasn't afraid to jump in and try something new. The way Norman saw it, he was just keeping an eye on the future and anticipating his customers' needs. But in the process, Norman McCall's ideas were shaping an industry. Mr. Norman raised the bar for everyone. Uh, he tended to be the, the leader when it came to innovation and technology. And as a result, uh, many of his peers picked up and, on his ideas uh, and either uh, included them in their projects or enhanced them. And I think as a result, the entire industry has benefited from uh, technology and innovation that he led the way on. Norman's biggest contribution to the change in the vessels uh, of the type he supplied over the years is, is his desire to continue to supply what the oil companies needed ahead of their need. As a businessman, Norman earned universal respect for his sense of honor and integrity. Dad made a lot of deals with a handshake. Um, you know, when we first started out, and he first started out, uh, his word was as good as a contract. It would be great if the majority of the people in this world had his business ethics, because uh, he does set a high standard for himself. You know, Norman, the other just had a conversation yesterday about salesmen. He said, I never needed a salesman, because when customers needed a boat, they called me, and my reputation sold itself. Over the years, Norman McCall formed business partnerships that have evolved into lasting friendships, and the people he hired were fiercely loyal. As Norman himself once put it, when they came to work for me, they stayed. They don't leave because he treats them like family. And when you say Norman McCall, they open their eyes and they listen to him, you know what I mean? They believe him. It's like being their daddy, you know? You know, they just love Norman and the McCall family, you know? because that's good, real good people, they're hard to beat. My, my man has all my respect, and then some. I mean, he's been really good to work with, and uh, he's been a good person, a good friend, a mentor. I mean, that's nothing but respect. In 1995, Norman McCall's career took another turn when Mobile Oil suggested that Seacor Marine call on Norman for his expertise. In Nigeria, Mobile needed a fast supply service that simply didn't exist. Together, McCall and Secor solved the problem, and one year later, the companies merged. He is seen as the name in crew boats, and when you wanted a crew boat, you called McCall. And that's true worldwide, even you go to uh, West Africa or the Middle East, and McCall's name is synonymous with large crew boats. After more than 60 years in the business, Norman McCall remains focused on vessels, on his customers, on excellence. Because he loves it. It's not a job. He just loves it, you know? Boats, that's Mr. McCall's vacation. That's his, that's his leisure, you know? And throughout these years of hard work, Norman McCall's mischievous sense of humor has always been alive and well. And my father was working on a pet project for himself, a, a fishing boat he wanted to build. And it was in the phases of construction. We had launched it in the water, but what took place over the weekend, it had a lot of rain, and the boat, the boat sank. So my dad is, you know, in his clothes, soaking wet, and he's out there setting up the pumps and the hoses to start pumping it out. And this is when Mr. McCall had met my father, and he walked up there, and of course Mr. McCall's, you know, high and dry and looking down at my father, and he turned around and looked at my father, and he said, well, son, do all of your boats do this? <laughs> For the son following in his father's footsteps, both the rewards and the hard lessons are looked upon as gifts. That is just that, that I just feel very fortunate that I was able to, you know, work with Dad, you know, for all these years, and 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 you know, I think a lot, a lot of people don't have the, don't have the opportunity to, you know, work with their 
parents as I have and, and, and spend time. Uh, and I just, that's something I'll, I'll always cherish. And so today, the story of Norman McCall is unfinished, but the legend that he has become and his legacy are assured. His impact on marine transportation and upon the people that his life has touched along the way is powerful and everlasting. For your monumental contributions to the growth of our industry, for your unwavering commitment to your customers and your employees, for your unique vision to push the boundaries of technology, for the humor, humility, integrity, and dignity that guide your interactions with others. Thank you, Norman McCall.